on stage, Robert Lemke. Uh, welcome, uh, and thanks for, for the welcome of you. So I'm, I'm very happy that I can stand here on stage uh, for the NEOS team. Uh, somehow, when we talk about uh, who should stay on stage, uh, they don't really... I should ask them more. Anyway, I'm, I'm really glad to have you here. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. Um, so we're sold out this year. Who would have thought that uh, some, some time ago that with our own NEOS conference and Flow conference, we, we would have a full room uh, and be sold out. And so I'll have a few minutes left to, to tell you about the uh, past, present, and future of the NEOS team. So it won't be a revolutionary story, but it will um, be the way to, to transfer a bit the information we have in the NEOS team to you guys, uh, because for us, uh, many things are very obvious, of course. Um, and we would like to uh, give you some idea of that. Oh yeah, so I have, this slide is mostly for slide share, so then someone downloads the slides, he knows who's the talk of. So I'll start with the past. Um, so what, what happened since the last inspiring conference? That is basically uh, what we always cover. And 15 releases we had during the last year uh, that is quite a lot of work, actually. So these are all the numbers we have. Lots of flow releases and also lots of NEOS releases. So um, we do also maintain the, the previous branches until they make, uh, don't make sense to um, maintain anymore, of course, because people will move to new branches anyway. So we, we have a lot of releases and lots of new features um, also. Um, and one of the most important features certainly was uh, the multi-language support in NEOS. That was a very important feature for, for many agencies um, who said, okay, then we can actually start creating websites with NEOS. And uh, you might have heard that already, but you can also see that in a, in a dedicated talk today, uh, tomorrow, um, that the whole idea about uh, language support um, quite, took quite some consideration because we wanted to make it very general and created this concept of content dimensions. And um, so we, we already know from a few projects now that this really pays off and is a really nice uh, mechanism to work with. Another deal breaker for many was uh, the speed of NEOS at some point. Uh, that was also solved last year. It uh, feels like we, we solved that way earlier, but it happened last year, actually, where we introduced uh, the caching mechanism for TypeScript. So where you have a page cache, but also have everything individually cached, you can just re regenerate one single content element. Um, and that led to quite nice request times, um, which also allowed uh, many agencies to create uh, larger websites. So, um, for example, the biggest political party in Denmark runs a website based on NEOS. Um, and also, in, especially in Germany at the moment, we see a few uh, websites coming up. So from travel agencies or travel uh, companies to um, actually cities. Um, and also we see integrations uh, with NEOS. And that is a very important point. Um, it goes into the direction what Stefan just said. We always created NEOS in a way that it allows us to, to have a content management platform um, hooking into all kinds of services and content sources and uh, channels where we put content into. So that is one of the reasons why we actually created that whole framework below. Yeah? And now we have projects where we integrate NEOS with other systems. So for example, with commerce solutions. Um, this here is a... Um, combination of Magento with NEOS, created by Tech Division. Um, and uh, just recently, uh, I've been at the e-commerce camp in Jena, 
and we demoed a combination of a completely API-driven e-commerce system. So that is a shop which doesn't render any HTML output, but only has APIs for, for the products and cards, etc. And Neos was managing the whole front end, including the shopping cart and placing orders, etc. And we took four days to create a showcase, and it worked really nicely to integrate that through the REST API, etc. And I think um, that, that tells us that the, the overall concepts in, in Neos work, work pretty nicely. So that's a lot of releases and a lot of features we created. And uh, one important bit which, which also happened last year was we grew the team. Yeah, and we found nice new places to have code sprints in. This one is really legendary. It, it was a castle in Denmark, uh, which we had all by ourselves. And so you had nice rooms there. So you would ask, where's Carson at the moment? Oh, he's in the library. Yeah, which library? <laughs> um, so that, that helps us really to, to build up that team spirit, which is so important for this project, because that is actually the team is um, the whole reason why Neos exists and, and is being developed further. And we got some pretty nice feedback as well, because we try to welcome new team members. And, and just uh, we had a code sprint just um, before this conference where we also had new um, uh, attendees there, and we try to be as welcoming as possible, so you can ask them um, if that works out. So one, one nice thing is uh, Dimitri, for example, also joined us there in Denmark, and actually he's here today, right? No, no oh no, he had to, ah, yeah, but he was at the sprint. And yeah, so maybe, but who's here from the Neos team? Can you just stand up for, just for a second? Ah. Yeah, so thank you to all of you uh, for making this possible. We, yes. Okay, <clears throat> um, so that was the regular pizza evening uh, during the sprint we had this week. Um, you have to know that we literally spent hundreds of hours already this year putting into NEOS, and that is all voluntary work, and I think that's just amazing that this is possible. Um, so everybody dedicates quite a lot of time and money into this. Right, so that was a successful thing of the past. We grew the team a little, um, and um, it's still not enough, but that, that's another story I'll tell, tell later. Also what happened last year was we moved our chat to Slack, and um, that has a few drawbacks, like, uh, for example, you need to actually register um, at Slack in order to, to communicate with a team um, through a chat. But there's a, a page where you can just enter your email address and then you automatically get an invitation. But I can say that for the actual work of the core team, um, this has been a big improvement. Um, it helps us really communicating in a much better way because we can just look into the history and see what happened during the last two days uh, when you uh, had a weekend, actually, because you have family and others don't. And... <laughs> hard thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but that helped us a lot. All right, so what are we dealing with, it, uh, with at the moment? Um, one thing is this guy here. Remember that? Uh, so we're actually working on the final touches of Flow 3. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Finally, there will be a Flow 3 release again. Um, and so we have already um, released a beta version of it. Um, the release manager is Bastian Weidelich, who dedicates quite some energy to getting everything together. Many people are really focused on Neos, so he does his best to get everybody together to... Um, clean up um, for the final release. And so why is it a major release? Well, there are a few breaking changes in there, um, but we did our best to actually provide you with a very smooth migration path. So most of the changes actually can be um, solved automatically by, by our core migration script. Um, and we did a few migrations already. 
uh, also for customer websites, and it should work out pretty smoothly, uh, especially compared to many other open source projects. Um, one of the key features is um, a major upgrade to the security framework, which took quite some work, actually more than a year. Um, and uh, that, that helps us implementing a lot of new features also uh, for NEOS. So the second thing we're working on is NEOS 2.0. And, well, I am re the release manager of NEOS 2.0. That's why it takes so long. Um, but Aske is uh, helping a lot and took over lots of the management part. Um, so that is a major upgrade because we have great new features in there. And Christian will show off all the new features in, in NEOS 2.0. But also, just uh, from a semantic versioning standpoint, um, it relies on Flow 3. So we also need a major upgrade for NEOS 2. So there are lots of detail improvements, and, but also some, some nice new bigger features, um, which are based on features in Flow. And, and Christian will tell all about it. So. Finally, also, that, that is the case now, we, we get more international. That is important not only for the translation of the website, but also the user interface is translated now in, in NEOS 2.0. Right, so we face a few challenges, and that is why this isn't present. So um, I don't know who did something to help with avoiding global warming today. <laughs> you did. Yeah, um, I'm not sure I did. Uh, I'm, I'm only using a notebook. Maybe that helps a bit. Well, that is a problem, of course. That is so fuzzy. We know that morally that is something we should help with. But the problem with these kind of things is if you do something to help with it, you don't get a direct feedback. It will happen in a few thousand years, or you never know, right? And so that, that is also the case with any public good. Um, so if th someone doesn't see that you're leaving some trash in the park or whatever, hmm, uh, someone will clean that up. And that works until uh, a certain degree. So there have been theories about it. And I, I talked about it also at the T3Con in Berlin last year. Actually, this here um, is a statement of an Amazon best-selling author from a book called Politics. Um, that's Aristotle. And he uh, had that very uh, beginning of the theory of how to deal with public goods and communities. Um, and there's a lot to read about, actually. I don't want to harm you with that during this keynote, so I prepared a link for you, which you can look up. There's a nice philosophical article about the free rider phenomenon and what it does to communities and public goods, etc. So why do I um, say all this? Well, NEOS is not the product you buy, obviously, right? Um, NEOS is a public good, and it doesn't belong to anyone. It doesn't, nobody owns NEOS. And I'm really glad that this is the case, that we don't have a company owning NEOS. Um, so some people started it, some people continue with NEOS, and everybody can pick up the work. And this system only works um, if someone contributes just a little bit to it. And that doesn't mean that you actually have to be coding NEOS or help with the documentation, which would be nice. And you're very invited to do so. But I would like to ask you to just find any kind of way to contribute to the project and there are many things you could do. Um, you could write a blog post about your experiences. Uh, many people do. You could organize a conference. <laughs> um, that is a big contribution, of course. Um, in total, um, Matt Mullenweg from the WordPress uh, project, for example, he suggested that you dedicate um, the value of 5% of your working time in a company to the project you're using, you build your business on. That is quite much, of course. Um, so if you have 20 employees, you already have, need one full-time employee only for NEOS. But just try to get into that direction. And there are many small things you can do. So we know that people 
have problems with NEOS in practice, setting it up, or even having problems with stability uh, for editors. Um, we know about these things, and we, we invest a lot of hours to fixing these things, but the problematic point is that most of the time we hear like, yeah, NEOS is instable for us. So yeah, what happened? I can't tell you really. I don't re remember which project it was, but the feeling was bad. Yeah? So what should we do with that? That's really difficult. Uh, what would help us a lot? You are web agencies and developers. You're used to giving good, um, or at least you know what a good error description is. Just, I mean, how do you deal with your customer if your customer says, I'm basically a bit unhappy with the website. Could you improve that, please? Um, so please, if you want to contribute something, then dedicate some time, find just one error or one problem you see and write it down in a nice way so we can reproduce it. And if that's not possible, then just get in touch with someone in the core team um, and, and just pay him for uh, 100 euros to fix that bug or something. That will make a big difference. Imagine everybody who finds a bug would actually do that. That would help a lot. So that was what I wanted to say about contribution. And in that field, one thing I need to mention is um, Carsten, Christian and I um, started a new company this year, Flow Native. And I'm mentioning that because one of, for one thing is um, you can actually come to us if you have any problems with NEOS and need to have it urgently fixed and we will organize it so that we either fix it ourselves or ask the core team to do so. But um, so we provide a help desk with service level agreements to, to developers. We don't do end customer work ourselves. So we don't create websites. We are only there for you guys, for web agencies, and for organize, uh, organizations um, using NEOS. So we help you, right? And I want to mention it because um, it is important that you know how we want to place that company in our community. So this is one option some open source projects take. So the founder creates a company and more or less controls um, the, the open source project just because he's the founder, right? Um, and then you have the core team and the community. In practice, it might be structured differently, but the impact is this one. This is not what we intend. So we have a more fuzzy and chaotic model uh, which fits to our NEOS project. Um, so we think, I mean, the founders have a company, the agencies have a company, uh, the, the, the core team members are parts of companies or not. They might be individuals, etc. And we just uh, play together in, in some way and there's no central, uh, centralistic uh, approach to that company. So when the role of Flow Native, as I said, is we provide help to web agencies and end users um, and try to hopefully uh, finance the core team a bit better by uh, directing new feature requests, et cetera, to the core team. Right, so that was about Flow Native. Um, the future. Um, we have lots of tasks to do. We have a huge list of tasks, and we have to decide somehow with our resources we have what to work on next. And so I suggested to, to have two criteria for that. The first is, what do we need to do in order to create an open, friendly, and effective community? Um, now that we have worked on all these major features, uh, we should take a bit more time focusing actually on building that community. We started in November with a project we call Red Carpet, which uh, is just for looking at bugs and features which enable newcomers to get started with NEOS much um, in a much easier way. So, if you're interested uh, in what the state, oops, in, the, in what the state of that is, um, we have in the Jira board we have an epic for that, uh, where you find all the red carpet issues. And the other thing is we want to lower the barriers um, for becoming a contributor to the NEOS team. 
And so we took a few decisions uh, just this week in the core team. One thing is we will drop the content contributor license agreement. So if you want to write code or documentation from now on, you don't need to sign that contributor license agreement anymore. That was only for um, having the chance to change the license of NEOS and Flow at some point. And we do that now. Uh, so the next Flow version uh, will have the MIT license, which is the most liberal license we can have. Um, so we allow to do everybody doing anything with Flow and contribute uh, in the way they would like to. And another bottleneck we have seen was uh, the whole setup to actually the whole steps you have to take just to fix a typo in the documentation, the CLA getting an account at typo3.org and getting a mentor for understanding Garrett, etc. So we will move with Neos and Flow, we will move to GitHub. So we um, looked at that for a whole year, every now and then, and this, just this week we looked at the actual workflow uh, this would mean for us. I think Garrett is a nice tool, um, but it's a pro tool. And so we don't want to use Garrett anymore because otherwise it would create a two-class um, contribution uh, eco ecosystem. So we will use the same like every contrib contributor will use and we'll do that on GitHub. So um, the second criteria we look at for choosing our task is what creates value for our users because we have so much ideas, so many ideas for creating new features and technical stuff but um, actually we want to create value for our users. We updated the roadmap on the NAILS website just yesterday so if you want to look in a very um, abstract way, but with some explanation of what we are going to work on in the future, um, you can read it there. But also we have a product vision, which goes way beyond what we'll do this month or this year, and that is a vision for how NEOS should look like in 2020. And Rasmus and Daniel will tell you all about that in, in the specific keynote about our product vision. Um, because, as you can imagine, we have a saturated CMS market. Practically, NEOS is a completely new product. So we have to find a vision which is not there yet, and I think we did so. So I think in total, uh, when you look at the NEOS team at least, and what the feedback we get, that is a really cool future. Uh, we have a few challenges, especially with resources, um, with practically no budget, the core team solves that all. But um, I think, I mean, looking at how many people are here and how many people are starting to use NEOS, that will be a pretty nice future. So thank you.